Hello everyone, welcome back to another Be Connected session. I'm with you as always, I'm your host, I'm Emily. <laughs> Today we are looking at um, looking at your iPad and iPhone. So we're gonna get started with those, some very um, entry level stuff, some tips and tricks you may not have noticed before or have been new to more recent updates. Um, everyone in the chat, let me know what version of um, iPad or iPhone you have and I can get an idea of what we're working with. Otherwise, I'll just blaze on through assuming we're in the latest update, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So let's jump through to the next slide. Let's talk about what we're gonna talk about today. So we'll be looking at first the Be Connected website. That is the place to go um, to find more info. It's where I build my information I take from Be Connected that builds up these PowerPoint slides, these uh, webinars. I keep just calling them PowerPoint. Um, we'll go into what is an iOS? What does it mean? What are they talking about when they mean operating systems? Um, we'll look at some important gestures you can be using on your iPhone or iPad that you've maybe not noticed before. Um, as well as some important system settings. And then we'll look through the Notes app and the Camera app. The Notes app is pretty underutilized, but I still think it's quite a good one. Um, and then we'll look at some extra tips with the Camera app. You might've been here last week where you talked about digital cameras and we did indeed look at the Camera app. So this will be quite similar, but we'll just run through it again, just in case you've missed that one. And then we'll be looking at how to listen to ebooks and audio books on your device. And we'll jump into questions at the end. So you're welcome to pop them in the chat now, but if you want to hold them off to the end, that's okay as well. Fabulous. So Be Connected. Um, it's a government-based initiative um, looking to get everyone online, no matter what age level, skill level, how familiar you are with technology. Um, these are introductory courses that build your confidence and your skills with using new tech and um, online resources. So um, they have a broad range of topics, which is what I've been covering throughout all of my webinars. So we've gone from um, online safety, online shopping, using digital cameras, as I did last week, Google Earth, a whole range of things. Um, it's self-paced. You just do it at your own leisure. You could, of course, just attend these webinars with me. That works as well, too. Um, very simple to use. Um, and you can sign up to keep track of your training. I recommend this website to just about anyone. Um, even if you don't have access to a computer, you can print off PDF files for um, handling physically in the real world. Um, so that's another option as well. So let's have a quick gander. Let's have a look. At what Be Connected looks like. So this is the website. Just type in Be Connected into Google and you'll find it that way. What I'm looking at currently, we're going to be looking into the topic library and we'll be looking at Apple iPad. There's also one for iPhone. They're extremely similar. I just open iPad because it's got larger graphics because it's a bigger screen. Um, yeah, so we're just going to run through this today. So if you're looking to find other topics that you might be interested in, just jump into the top tab here in the topic library. Starts off from the absolute basics, the essentials to knowing, um, you know, what a computer is, where to start, how to use a touch screen, all the way through to you know, how to use emails. Um, they've even got some games and some typing games as well, which I think is quite cool. So um, games to actually play on your device, so on your touch screen. Um, which teaches you how to use a touch key, what is a swipe, double tap, hold the finger down, things like that. Brilliant for maybe older family members or even young family members who are trying to teach how to use these things. Um, although most young kids pick it up just by <laughs> pressing things, don't they? <laughs> so it's a great resource for everybody. Um, and I do, as I say, I recommend it to people because it is great fun. So jumping through, that's Be Connected. That's what we're basing our presentation off today. Let's have a look at what is an iOS. What does it stand for? Well, it's Apple's intelligent operating system. Uh, most uh, designs are called operating systems. So that's something like uh, Android and Google um, would just have an operating system running on their system. So not to say system so often, the actual software that runs on your device to make it work. So hardware, software, hardware is the physical thing. So iPad screen, that's hardware. The battery, the memory card, all this stuff on the inside is hardware. But the digitized information is software, which lets it run and interpret what you're inputting. So Apple's um, a little clever. They've added a little I. So for them, the lowercase I just stands for intelligent. So iPhone, intelligent phone, iPad, intelligent pad. 
Um, the current system we're running on is 13.5.1. I've not checked it today. I don't think they've made an update within the last week. Um, but the last update, which added the point one, was just a security update and system update. So very small, I think it was maybe a megabyte big, which isn't very big at all. Um, each update adds new features for the most part. Um, the latest one for this year was 13. So just changing over to iOS 13, um, fully without any extra numbers after that. And that introduced, the main thing people are excited about was a dark theme on your device. So Apple's known for having a white screen with you know, dark text, but they've decided, yes, we'll do what other devices do and offer both views. So one that's easier to read at night, one that is better in the day. And if you just prefer one or the other, you can keep it on that way. So that was the sort of the big thing. There are a few extra functionalities, functionalities extra functions that were added. Um, so you may have noticed them if you've updated already. If you haven't, I recommend it. Um, Apple devices work best when they're fully updated up to the current um, edition. Um, I would say differently for your Mac, if you've got a computer from Apple, so that's a laptop or a sort of desktop design. Um, some can be quite buggy when they come out early. So some people like love to test the new stuff, try it out, um, but they will be finding some small bugs. Bugs being just errors in code and similar issues where human errors come into it or the equations haven't matched up, things like that. I don't fully understand it, so I won't pretend that I do. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're up to iOS 13 and you'll slowly see that as you do more updates, there'll be um, higher numbers building on that. So 13.5.2 and things like that. Um, and it'll keep changing. So we'll eventually next year, hopefully, we'll have a 14 to look forward to. Um, not sure what that will entail, but hopefully more functionality. But what's the point of functionality if you don't know how to use it? So let's have a look at first, we're going to look at important gestures. So here I've got my handy hand <laughs> um, and we'll see that more of that in a second um, important just is what I'm talking about uh, movements on your and sorry for being so far away let me come closer here I am so we're talking about gestures you make on the screen to have an outcome so one gesture and I'll look at them in just a second but for example one gesture is pulling <laughs> pulling down from the right hand corner from the bezel, the bezel being this outer area that doesn't have a touch screen. So pulling from the bezel down, bringing up uh, hotkeys. Um, so we'll look, about, look at that in just a tick. But that's what I mean by what gestures are and all that jazz. So let's go back to our important gestures. So I've got my, not to be, I've got my little thing, <laughs> severed hand, uh, to indicate what I'm trying to show, just to make it very clear. So. A few important gestures to know. You probably know these already. Some can be done with physical buttons. So something like locking the screen, you can do by pressing the button on the top. You can also swipe it away now. So these are newer features of newer updates. Older iPads may not have this if you've not updated. Um, but keep that in mind. This is for the recent stuff. So important gestures, swiping to unlock. I've got my little disembodied hand <laughs> floating across the screen. So that's swiping up from the bezel. Again, that area around the edge that doesn't have a touch screen and then swiping into it. The next is from above, from the bezel down, pulling it down. It used to be for notifications. Now it locks the screen. Yep, I just made sure. <laughs> and swiping down from the center to search. This one's a little lesser known and I bring it up a lot when I'm talking to people either over the phone or in person when we've had people in person in the library. Swiping down from the center of the screen, as you can see, yeah, like that. We'll bring down a search bar up top, like so, which will allow you to search for an app, a document name, a photo name, a contact, um, anything like that. So say if I really wanted the notes app, I type in N-O-T-E-S, it'd come up with a list of applications as well as some settings for notes, which I think is quite cool. So that's what swiping down from the center does. Um, and then, of course, to get to the control panel, as I showed you, sliding the finger from the corner. So it looks like this. So let's show you here. <laughs> Same thing as before, and I'll bring my, bring my big screen back. Swiping from the top corner, bringing up your um, shortcuts, hot screen. I actually don't know the name of this. Um, 
it doesn't have a little title, so I wouldn't know. But it lets you do things like quickly change the brightness level. Voila. So these two little bars are filled up. This one's the volume, which I can't tell because I'm not playing any music. That's volume. And then brightness. So brightness is usually the one that you'd be going for quite quickly or turning off your Wi-Fi. So hitting the Wi-Fi on, Wi-Fi off, or Bluetooth, or hotspot, or airplane mode. You just want to turn everything off and have it be quiet. Um, you've also got quiet time, the little crescent moon. Just means that you won't be getting notifications or phone call um, ringing when you've got this turned on. So it's great to have if you want to keep your phone on overnight so you can still receive calls, but maybe you won't be woken up by them um, or receive messages or things like that, have emails come in, um, but you don't want the little whoosh or the ding noise come up on your phone. That's an option. Um, so play around with these, they're great fun. Um, something like this one is locking the screen, for example, um, notifications on and off, off, for example, without having full quiet time. Um, as well as the timer clock, and I don't know what that is. Oh, this is to add, um, this would show you all the um, at-home apps technology that Apple provides. So if you had this, you could connect to your Apple TV, for example. Um, Siri, does Siri have its own little microphone yet? I think it does. I don't know what it's called though. Um, but something like Google Home would have it on a Samsung, but here it's connected um, all your Apple devices. So. Um, they're really promoting that um, brand loyalty and sticking with one thing. Um, of course, most of us just like iPads because they're easy to use and we're not you know, necessarily big Apple fans. We just happen to like the tech. Cool. So those are gestures. Let's have a look now. Next. Let's see if it behaves. There we go. Okay. We're going to look at system preferences. Um, very important to know if you've not had a play with them before, this will be very informative. We're going to first be looking at things like setting your preferred language, updating date and time. Usually when you're connected to the internet, um, it'll know where you are in the world and it can pop the time in correctly for you. Um, but in case you're maybe just got off a plane, not that we would <laughs> at this time, let's say in the future, you go traveling, you get off a plane, you haven't got uh, internet connected yet, especially if it's your iPad. Um, sometimes it'll be the case that you have mobile data on your phone, but you can't turn it on while on the tarmac or something like that. Um, you maybe want to adjust the time. And oftentimes it'll be the case that the pilot will tell you the time. You go, ah, oh, excellent. And you can adjust it this way. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, changing notification and system sounds as, uh, as well as many other things. So let's jump into, well, back to my face. <laughs> there we go. So changing system settings. We're first going to be looking for this gear icon. So, and I'll talk about this with managing apps. We're going to talk about how you can uh, keep your front page tidy and looking nice. Um, but this on the hot bar down here, it'll have your saved apps on the left hand side. <laughs> and then the apps you've opened recently on the right hand side. There is a little split in between a little break that tells you the difference. So say, for example, um, I've got the uh, notes app, the app store, and then system preferences or settings. Um, if I were to open clock, interesting. Now I close clock, clock will be there in my most recent side. So there are recently used apps as well as your favorite apps. Um, I'd like to have my system settings on the favorite side. So I'll talk about this later. I have a slide for this. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's jump into settings. Click. So we're into settings. You can see that I'm not logged in. So it just says, please sign in with your Apple ID. Um, this is a work iPad, so I'm not gonna sign in with an Apple ID. Um, it's been a while since I've logged in. I wouldn't know the password. So what we're looking at today on the, it's hard to see open on the here this way. On the left-hand side, we have um, the main headings. So the main system areas we wanna look at. Pardon if that's too bright. Let me just adjust. How simple is that? Excellent. So on this side, we've got our main headings. And then once you've opened the window, it'll show you. So if we're on airplane mode, sorry, that's not a setting. <laughs> if you want to hit Wi-Fi, for example, it'll then open all the Wi-Fi in this other column. So I'll go down to general. That's where we want to start. So again, it looks like another system setting symbol. Voila. And then on the right-hand side, it comes up with all your system information, including the about area. 
which we'll talk about which software version we have. So if you're interested, that's how you find out the software version. And this one is up to date with 13.4, 4.1. Were we up to 13.5? <laughs> Pardon me, I'm just extremely interested, so now I'm gonna go back. 13.5, oh, my goodness, I'm out of date. <laughs> Well, I'm a couple of updates behind, pardon me. Me and my assuming I was up to date. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and it lets you know your model name, what generation of iPad you have. So if anyone asks, this is the way to get to it. You go into general in your settings and you can see mine is the sixth generation iPad. Excellent. Talks about your network provider. If you've got wireless, sorry, um, you've got mobile on your device, so that'd be great for phones. We'll have that. Um, some iPads won't. Most iPads just connect with either a hotspot or with your Wi-Fi, and that's all they need to do. This one can go wireless, it appears, um, and go out walking with it if I wanted to. <laughs> Let's see on the capacity. So that's in general, but what we'll look at in the top, one moment. There we go, I was in the about section. So back, if you go back into general, there we go, that maybe is okay to see. Um, you can see we've got date and time, keyboard options, font choices, um, language and region, as well as your dictionary. So you can even add in um, the English spelling of, you know, anything with a Z, <laughs> change it to an S, um, it'll talk about it there. Mine isn't loading, so I don't know why that is, I'll let it be. But, so for example, if we're gonna jump into date and time, easy enough to adjust. You can even change it to 24 hour time if that's your preference. Um, you can change it so it doesn't show the AM or PM in the system status bar so at the top. I'm gonna to turn it back on. I like the AM and the PM. And you can take the whole date out if that's something you'd like to get rid of. And you can say, where is your time zone? So you can update it to wherever you want it to be. If you're traveling and you're on a different time, you can change it back to your current time zone or you can leave it on wherever you came from to keep um, pace with your jet lag, baby. <laughs> um, additionally, so we're talking about both general system settings. Um, we're looking at things like keyboard, things like that. So there are some cool keyboard in, um, options. Things like auto capitalization, auto correction can be turned off. So if you find that your autocorrect is just not getting it half the time, you're welcome to turn it off. Just switch these little green switches to go off. So when you click it off, it goes gray and that's back on again. So check through these, see what you're interested in. Um, you can even update what type of keyboard you're using. So um, what I've got here, I've got English Australia keyboard and you can change how the layout is. So most of us use a QWERTY keyboard, QWERTY being, let me just show you what a QWERTY keyboard is if I'm going to quickly. There we go, QWERTY. So QWERTY keyboard being Q-U-E-R-T-Y, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, um, but other keyboards around the world have a different layout. So that's how we set it up for the most part in Australia. But if you're used to something else, that's where you can change it. So have a flick through the general settings. There are a lot of, um, quite a few interesting areas to peek into. And you can go down quite a rabbit hole by clicking next, 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 and you can get quite far. So. Whenever you're ready to come back, just hit the little back arrows, but in blue, that'll take you back. Next thing I wanna look at is accessibility, or even, you know, if you wanna look at display and brightness, you can change your theme, for example. So the dark theme changes it to this lovely uh, black background with very bright popping colors. Um, I'll leave it on the light, just cause I know most people have it on the light background and wanna make it look as similar to your device as possible. Um, you can change, Brightness from here, if that's something you prefer to do. Voila. Yes, and you can even change how long the display stays on for. So mine will turn off after two minutes. You can change that all the way up to 15, 10, or never turn off until I turn it off. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that last option just because if you were to forget about it, it'd be on all day and it would eventually run out of battery just because it's awake and on. And you can even change the text size. So you can update it so it's even larger. So if you need a larger text size or if you've been having trouble seeing the very small writing on your device, feel free to update it there. Excellent. Accessibility is the next place I wanna look at. So if you find that some things aren't working for you or you have some um, hard of hearing, hard of sight, things like that, there are options here that will make it a lot easier 
um, things like display and text size, you can go beyond what is recommend or recommended. Um, you can get to extremely large. You can invert colors, um, add contrast to things, change shapes. Um, bold text, for example, makes it a lot easier to read, especially from afar. So if you're needing a little extra help with reading, especially, that's brilliant. It's great to use. Let's have a look what else I can offer. Uh, voiceover can could be quite fun. There's an option to turn on voiceover, which means it'll start reading text as an option. So I'll turn that on for now. Voiceover alert. Important. There we go. Important alert. I'll say yes. Okay. Button. Okay. Okay. Button. Okay. Button. Cancel. Button. Cancel. There we go. Never mind. Well, that's an option. It lets you highlight text and it'll read it back to you. So if there's something you're interested in, jump into VoiceOver and have a read of the settings. Um, mine didn't want me to change it right away without confirmation, so I'll leave that as is. You can update your keyboards, um, changing the size of the keyboard, different commands, things like that. Um, you can even limit keyboards if you've got young kids and you don't want them pressing certain things. That's also an option. So that's in accessibility at least. Other things um, you could show off are changing the logo size of your apps on your homepage. So we've got it currently on the more tab. So you can kind of see it there, more. But then there's the large option. So we'll turn that on and that's much bigger. So this is sort of closer to what an older iPad sort of had. The screen was generally were they smaller than this? This seems about the right size. Um, but recently they're updating it so you can view more and more apps at once. You can now change it back to the larger size so you'll have a nice full screen of apps. Again, depends on what you prefer and how much space you need to view things. Uh, most people are still okay with the very small apps, um, but you may prefer the larger, more traditional way that it used to be. Excellent. So those are some general system settings. You can have a skim through. Um, I really say it's worthwhile having a look through and just seeing what they can offer. You may find a setting that you think, I'd be perfect if I never knew that existed. So please have a look through your settings. Don't be afraid to turn things on and off and give them a go. Um, anything that will majorly change how you use your iPad will give you a warning. So don't be afraid to turn things on and off because even if there was anything that would change your iPad drastically, it would bring up a little warning and it wouldn't let you go until you have read it through and gone, okay, yes, I'm agreeing to that. That's okay. I understand that my touchscreen will change slightly and I know how to get back to it if I need to change it. Okay. So those are our general system settings and preferences. Let's roll on through to organizing your apps. So this is as I was speaking before, I was going to start moving some apps around, but I knew we had this to come up. So organizing your apps, have a quick look at the little graphic I've got on the left-hand side. Um, it's not mine, it's just a stock photo. However, they have made some brilliant little organization spaces um, using their apps that they've got on their screen. So this is great if you've got a lot of one category of apps and they're just sort of bulking up your screen too much. Um, or if you'd like to just organize things a little bit more nicely. So let's get started with how to move an app. Not everyone knows this. Um, and unless you've been taught, the actual, your iPad won't necessarily tell you how to do it. So moving an app. First thing to do, you have to unlock them from the screen. To do this, so you hold your finger down until it starts wiggling. Um, older editions wouldn't come up with a separate menu, but Currently, if you hold down your finger, you'll come up with a few extra settings, but if you hold it for long enough, one moment, <laughs> but I'll show you what the little window does. It brings up extra options as if you were right clicking it on a computer, for example. It goes, okay, I know what you're clicking on. What other settings would you like us to do with it? So I've clicked on maps. Um, a couple options that come up say, okay, we can mark your location with a little ping. Um, send your location to someone else. So you can send your immediate location to someone who's trying to find you at the shops or something like that, um, or search nearby. So these are all relating to the Maps app, which makes sense. Um, and then you can also click on Edit Home Screen. So that's what I'm gonna do. That would be how you get them to start wiggling. I've always known it to just hold it down, but I will click Edit Home Screen. There we go. So can you see them just slightly wiggling? I've mentioned that they shake, they kind of, 
trembling with anticipation. They're a little worried they're about to get deleted, I think. So if you have a look at yours, if you've done it at home, you'll see there's a mix of apps with crosses and apps without crosses. So they're these little light gray X symbols on the top left hand corner. You can see them. Uh, something like the App Store cannot be deleted. These are your um, pre-installed software that won't let you take it off, mostly because if you didn't have an App Store, you wouldn't know how to get any other apps. There wouldn't be a way. Um, settings, same thing. You need your settings. They're a very basic um, app that comes pre-installed on your device. Um, pre-installed in the way that they'll have told you that you say have 68 gigabytes. I'm just seeing how many we have here. 64 or something like that. Part of that memory space will have already be taken up by a few of these apps. So by the time you get to it, it might have 63 gigabytes available for you. Yes, gigabytes, not megabytes. Um, megabytes and gigabytes. I always get those two confused. So let's have a look. I've made a little, we've got a little box already set up here. So this is for organizing. It's been uh, named productivity. To open it, you just click it. It'll open a separate little window and present to you all these extra productivity related apps. Um, I've put a few in here that maybe aren't productive necessarily. So say we want to add something like, um, let's move, I'm going to try holding it and just seeing if it'll let me wiggle. There we go. Okay. So you can just hold your finger down till they start wiggling. I did think that was the case. So that's good. When you'd like to move something, you hold it down. It'll lift ever so slightly upward from the screen. Not in real life, of course, but it'll look as though it's lifting up. It just sort of adjusts itself. It's so minor that I couldn't show you. Yeah, I didn't see it there on the screen. But when you've got it, you're, you've got free reign to move it around. It'll always snap back to a grid. So if I put it here, it'll snap back to where it thinks is a good spot. Um, just a grid spot. It won't let you place things, you know, any which way. So it's always going to look fairly neat. That's one of the um, benefits of an Apple device. It's always going to have a uniform look. So we're going to hold that back down, start dragging. I'm going to pop it into my productivity window by just holding it over another app. So now it's in productivity. I can pick where it sits. Voila. Looks good. I keep saying voila today. I'm so sorry. To finish, you can either press the home button. Um, newer iPads don't have a home button, so they've added a little done symbol in the top corner and that'll stop them from wiggling and they'll relock in that way. So the only thing I have to mention is that when you're clicking and dragging um, to make a new collection, so I might collect my reminders and my notes app. Let me just hold it down. They just give you the option to click edit home, but I like holding it down. I think it's just simpler. So you click and drag and you just have to drop it on top of another app. And from there it'll open up and it'll assume a title. So it's some productivity again here, going that's a fairly productive app. <laughs> we've got notes and we've got reminders, keeping things tidy. <laughs> so I put that back there, fabulous. And pressing the home button this time to stop them from wiggling. You can also move, for example, your um, preferred settings down here. So what this is, again, it's your, uh, I think we just call it a hot dock. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's essentially just a locked little area that'll always stay at the bottom of your iPad, no matter which screen you're on, it will always stay. Um, and on this side are the things that will stay on that part of the screen. These ones will update depending on what you've opened recently. So I've got system settings there. We just open system settings. But if I wanted to put system settings in my favorites tab, which is kind of what this is, you would hold it down, get it to wiggle as it does. All right, I'll grab it from here then. <laughs> it's not letting me take it. It's saying, we'd like to take it off your most recent, which you can do. Click and drag, pull it down and add it to the list. And this will grow quite large. I think there is a point where it will have to stop, but all the apps will get smaller and smaller and smaller as you do. So it will make room for quite a few. Um, I just like having the system setting there so I always know where it is, so I can always change things around when I need to. Nice and quick. Excellent. So that's how we organize our apps, move them around. Let's jump to the next page and we're going to talk about exploring the Notes app. Um, underrated app, I'd say. Um, I, I love using it. Um, you can do things like just type notes, um, sketch out ideas. Here it is here. 
um, add photos to your notes to add emphasis or maybe keep track of something. Say if you're growing a garden or have got a home reno, you can take photos as it goes and you'll have a nice little set of pictures in one file, one note. Um, you can even scan photos, um, or scan documents, I should say, and save them as sort of PDF images. It'll be saved as a document in the notes app. And from there, you can actually forward it off to someone in an email. So if you don't have a scanner at home, like you can't come into the library to do scanning, um, you can actually do it just with your iPad using the notes app. The notes app is a basic inbuilt app. It can be deleted though. So be careful when moving around that you don't delete it, but it is a basic app for Apple products. So let me take you off here, put it back out there. There we go. So I've got it down here, little yellow and white symbol. I've got it on the slide there. Um, it also lets you draw with a finger and you can add little notes just written by hand. If you've got a Apple pencil, it's even easier. It does let you just scribble with a finger, which I think is great fun. So let's jump into the notes app. Let me bring my screen up again. Well, bring my face up again. Here I am. Excellent. So let's open the notes app and we'll go through a few neat features of it. So when you open a note, it'll often bring up a blank page because it knows, okay, you're ready to go. You want to make something. Um, you can just start typing. You can add images, but I'll show you what I prepared earlier. Um, if you were ever to go back, this is essentially as back as you can go. This is the main screen. It's ready to go. It just wants you to start typing. It's not, it's sort of no fuss, no frills. Um, so what we've got is a nice folder. The folder is just named notes because that's what we've got in here. Um, today I made one called welcome back to another Be Connected webinar. So that's that there. <laughs> and the first thing I popped in is a scan of my, one of the flyers we've had made, which did go through all of the events that we had on in person. Half of them, unfortunately, never came to be. <laughs> we got through half though, so I don't feel too bad about having printed them. So we've got our lovely PDF document. When you scan a document, it looks like this. So you can open it again. The brilliant part about this, and I'll show you how we do it, is when you add a PDF file, it'll automatically try and capture the whole page. It's brilliant with, um, just sort of you know, regular documents, bank statements, things like that. Um, it'll catch them very easily in the A4 format. You can even take a picture and then adjust it to make it work. Um, and it will always sharpen it, crisp it up and make it look as good as it can. So it will look like a scanned image. So let's have a play, let's have a go with that one. So the way to do it is, Let's see if I can remember. Here we go. So whenever you are, if I go back to notes, shop my keyboard away. So if you don't have your keyboard up, it's very hard to see. It's in a lovely light yellow color. We've got a pencil symbol, little pen tip. That's how you can start scribbling on your page. Welcome to try that now. We're looking at the photo though. So what it'll ask is if you'd like to add your own photo, take a photo right now. Um, pick one from your photo library, or at the very top, it'll say scan documents. There we go. So it should come up with a camera. Voila, you can see my background. That's me. But what I've got here is the flyer. I'm just going to stand up and take a photo of it, or just do like so. It's best to have it on a flat surface in a brightly lit room um, without glare on it. Mine is quite glossy, so I might get some glare. Um, if you can adjust it to avoid that, that is best. But what you want to do is aim it straight down, not at an angle, because it will adjust the perspective of the image and warp it. Um, the iPad, so notes will give it its best go to adjust it to make it look like an actual document, um, nicely flatly scanned. But it's understandable if you were to, you know, do an inch or so off. So I'm going to give it a, my best go. Let's see. It gives little guiding lines. So this is the image I came up with. You can see my keyboard. And you can see this is all grayed out and we've got a very bright image in the center. It's quite clever, but it has missed that this isn't where the document ends, it's down here. So what you can do, it comes up with these very small little circles around each of the corners. So it's gone, this is a corner and I'm going, not quite, but good job. What you can do is click and drag and adjust it. You'll notice, and this is very hard to show, as you press it, it'll bring up a magnified version 
and it'll show you the corner and you can land it directly flush with your document. So even if it's slightly warped, you'll be able to capture it. So I'm just gonna do mine here, like so, make it look very nice. It's missed it just a bit here, it's cut off the top. Of course, it is trying its best to capture it in the perfect ratio, nice straight lines. Um, I've got a few warp lines to give it because I did not take it directly downward, didn't quite get it perfect. But that has caught each corner. So what will happen now is it'll, it'll do its best to reshape it. So you may not be able to tell, but it isn't a perfect rectangle. That's just how I took the photo. It's not its fault. It gave it its best go. Um, here you can retake or keep the scan. So let's keep this one and we'll see how it adjusts it. Ooh. So save. It'll let you take a few in a row if you want. And I'll just see where it decides to put it. There we go. It's popped at the bottom there. I've added a few squiggles. So what it's done, it's renamed it to the first words it could see. So um, the first words on my document are, do you need a hand to get started online? So it's renamed it, do you need a hand to, yeah, do you need a hand to is what it got up to. Um, let's have a look at the final. It's a lot crispy. Uh, <laughs> it's a crisper document than the actual image, I'd say. Of course, this is a color photo versus an actual written document, but I think it's done a pretty good job capturing it. Considering my original image that I took was a bit crooked, it's done a good job sort of resizing it, fixing it up. You can, from this point, it gives you a few options. You can start cropping it. Again, hard to see. There's a crop symbol. So this little, it's hard to describe. It looks like two L's intersecting. This will let you sort of resize it, just cutting off edges as if you're snipping with a bit of paper. Um, and also add filters. So this is great if you've got black and white text, for example. Um, if you want to change your image to grayscale, if you want to print it off in grayscale, this is one way to do it. Um, if you'd like to make the text as texty as you can get, this is the way to do it. So you can see um, the words are crystal clear, very easy to see. The image, not so much, but all of this looks very good, nice and crispy. So that's great for um, if you've got maybe a washed out document, some faded documents, those will really sharpen them up and make all the blacks very dark. So look fresh again. You can rotate your document. So if it took the photo upside down or if it was horizontal, make it portrait again and you can send it off. So this is the quickest way to send your PDF off. So it is a PDF. You can see it's called a PDF document. Now it's a sort of picture file photo document file. I don't know what PDF stands for, but it is the preferred format for most um, readable documents. Um, and then PNG comes after as a photo document preference. Um, PDF though is what most people are going to be asking for if they're asking you to scan something, PDF file, best. It's nice and easy to read essentially. Choices are you can make a copy of it, save it somewhere on your device, save to files, You'll notice that files is in capital because files isn't um, a newer app on iPads and iPhones. If you've not looked at files, check it out. It'll have quite a lot going on in there. Mostly just all of your files accumulated in one place. It used to be very hard to find, where did that document go? I downloaded something. It'll be in files now. That's the easiest way to get to it. Um, sending it off via email or more. Mine doesn't have very many options because I haven't got too many apps installed on this one. Um, it would bring up things like Messenger, Twitter, um, Facebook, other things you may have downloaded and saved on your device. Um, mine only notes to do mail or save it to your books. Or as a book, I guess. Excellent. So that is a PDF file. If you have any questions about that or if I'm going too quickly, please let me know. Let's go back to the top. I'll show you, I've got a few examples of what you can do on here. You're welcome just to start typing. Type it in as a as you would uh, a memo, for example. Down here is a small dictation symbol. This will let you speak to the device and it'll type it out for you. I'll just see if I've enabled it. Okay, mine isn't enabled, but you can turn it on from here. So I'll enable dictation. Hello, this is Emily speaking. Here we go. So if I were to keep speaking, it would continue to type for me. There we go, got it quite good, excellent. So when you're ready to stop, mine's still listening. You can tell by the little, um, I don't know what these are called, little waves of sound. Um, you can just tap the keyboard symbol to bring the keyboard back up. Bing. Keep noise. 
So I'll just see how well it did. I'll read it back. Hello, this is Emily speaking. So I want to keep speaking. It would continue to type for me. Excellent. So when you're ready to stop the little waves of sound, you can just tap the keyboard symbol to bring the keyboard back up. Pretty good. So it's gotten more and more intelligent as the years have gone on. Um, certain pronunciation and mumbling never got caught. These days, uh, it's very intelligent, knows when a voice is speaking, um, and it'll do it that way. It'll also capitalize things. So it capitalized my name, which is nice, um, and certain names of places, countries, etc. Great fun. So dictation, I highly recommend. It won't work if you're not connected to the internet. That's the only thing. It does use intelligent services online in order to um, understand what you're saying. So if you'd like to use dictation, keep in mind that you have to have your internet turned on. But it is a lot of fun. Um, if you're tired of typing and just want to start creating something, a list, an idea, a story, you can just start reading aloud. So these are notes. You can just start writing, typing, have a whole wall of text. That's totally fine. Inserting photos, though, a lot more fun. So I've got a little frog here. You'll see him later. Not in person. Not to... <laughs> I won't have a frog in here. That would be irresponsible as much as I love that. So cute. Um, I have an image here, which I added drawings to. So then nothing special, but you can write on your image. So I've opened up my image here. This I took, you can tell I took it because it's a bit crooked. I just took it from my screen. I didn't have a frog nearby, but I wanted something sweet. Um, but up the top here, you have the option to, again, send it off, which is that little square with the up arrow. And then there's a little, pencil pen tip symbol or with a circle around it and that'll bring up drawing options. So for those who love being able to scribble on their iPad with their finger or have an Apple pencil, if you're um, really up to date, you'll be able to write notes with your hand even resting on the iPad without it interfering with what you're doing. If I were to do that right now, it'd be very confusing for it. Um, say you want to add a scribble, let's do with the highlighter. You can pick different colors, the whole array. So say if I want to do it in a lovely bright green, scrub, 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 start drawing, like so. Happy frog, right in the center. You can add arrows for emphasis on documents. Go, this is what I want, this frog. <laughs> can say hello, change colors, change pencils. Scribble, scribble, scribble. It's just a lot of fun. I have a great time on this. Lots of fun. <laughs> when you're ready to finish though, just click the done button. Done. So my note now has additional scribbles on it. Highly emphasized frog. Look at this frog, it says. Scrolling down further, you can write directly onto your note itself. Um, you'll notice that the paper isn't just plain white. It has a slight texture to it, which is very sweet. So you can add a brief little bit of text and then start scribbling. I've made a brief list. <laughs> milk, cereal, cat food, if you can't read my handwriting. Um, you can even add tables. So if you'd like to make a weekly checklist of what you've got going on, um, be connected webinar in the middle of the week there, pizza dinner, looking forward to that. <laughs> and add scribbles, again, for emphasis, for fun, highlight things, circle things, as if you had a real notebook in front of you. So that's the notes app, lots of fun. I think the scanning a document is probably the thing that people are going to be using it for most. Um, but if you have a penchant for making diary entries, um, like doing lists, things like that, just want to scribble something for a bit of fun, you can do that there as well. I've seen, I've seen some pretty cool artwork done on Notes alone. Um, there are other drawing apps, of course, you can get for your device, but I think Notes does a lot for a sort of less appreciated app. It still does quite a bit. Brilliant, okay, so we've talked about notes. Let's have a look at, it'll be phone, sorry, mobile cameras. So mobile and tablet cameras. Let's have a look, see if that's what's next. Yes, indeed. So the camera app on your phone. I know all of us have used our camera phone, of course. Our iPad phone, camera, <laughs> iPad camera, I should say. Um, but there are a few extra hints and tips that I'd like to share. I'm sorry I don't have much more of an interesting background. I've got the banners of our promotional stuff up on the back. Um, what I'd like to show you, so say if I want to take a picture, let's do literary anything. 
take a photo, fabulous. Um, I just want to have a background photo so I have something to show later. Some few things, so let me jump back to, um, yep, camera app on every device, inbuilt editing tools, excellent. Next slide, here we go. Um, we can add grid lines to your image. This is something for those who are particularly um, looking to do some building up their photography skills for the most part. Um, you can add grid lines to your device. So currently, no grid lines, don't need them, but if you'd like them, you can go into your settings, which I've left at the bottom, there it is, you don't have to go searching, and it'll be in camera. So we'll scroll down all the way down to the camera app, and you can turn grid on and off, so on. And you can even change things like video recording quality. Um, this one goes down to 720p, which is perfectly fine. Most videos are that. If you want to watch it um, back on a television or a high quality computer screen, I recommend filming in 180p. Um, just means more pixels, I think it's per, per square inch. Don't know, but it's more pixels per thing. <laughs> <laughs> per measurement grid. Um, at this point, it tells you, it'll let you know how much um, footage it's going to be using. So 600 megabytes with 800, there's a lot of numbers, HD at 30 frames per second is the default. That equates to a minute. So have a look at how much uh, memory space you have on your device. If it's a new device or a device you don't use that often, that's going to be okay. You can leave it at 110 ATP. Um, but if you find that you're running out of space, drop it down to 720 and you'll get a lot more use out of your iPad before you have to start moving off videos or deleting things. That's just the camera for video. Um, but you can also change it to high dynamic range. This, I've mentioned it, I've not mentioned it here. High dynamic range just means that it'll actively adjust your photo image, the final, what it'll look like, to have deep um, shadows and the, the best balance of highlights. So this is the, um, I talked about it last week. Um, it's a mix of ISO, aperture size, and shutter speed, which make up a good image. But digitally, these things can be adjusted by themselves or the computer. Um, you don't have to do it with a lens adjusting, for example, or changing um, what type of film you're using and things like that. Um, digitally, it can be done as if by magic almost. Um, and a high dynamic range does that for you. It makes your photos look um, of a higher caliber almost. They don't look like just typical phone photos. They look a bit more, but it does take away a lot of the control of what the image will look like at the end. So they'll make your shadows quite deep. The highlights will have a great balance. They're not gonna look washed out, but it may be not what you're going for. So you can turn it on and off. Turning it on means keep normal photos. So it'll look like a regular photo mode. So I've got my grid on, formats. Hmm. Interesting. Just changes how your image will save. Although I've never found that images on an iPad or an iPhone have not sent properly or been uploaded somewhere properly. So not a problem, leave that be. Um, I've turned on grid, brilliant. Let's jump back to our camera app. Oh, another trick, if you aren't aware, if you double click the home button, click, click, it'll bring up your most recently used apps. Some people will have, like, have to scroll through for a while because they've not closed things for a long time. To close, just swipe them away. Like so. And then you can click back on the app you actually would like to open. There we go. That just means they're running in the background. They're not necessarily always going to be using data, but it will slow down your device's memory ability. So um, it's the, not memory, it's RAM. So the actual information, the actual, it's hard to say. It's the information your iPad has to run through in order to function. Um, and if it's quite clogged up with multiple apps, it can slow down, things won't open as quickly. So do make sure when you double tap that you clean up things that you aren't using. Um, they'll even be there sometimes when you fully shut down your iPad and turn it back on, they'll still be there in the background for the most part. So back to camera, I now have grid lines. This is what we're looking for. Very fine grid lines, hard to see. Maybe impossible to see. Let me open my screen. <laughs> One moment. Here we go. Where am I? Where am I? Cool. So grid lines. Voila. You can see on his dark jumper that we've got these light lines. Grid lines help you 
focus on the rule of thirds. In photography, the rule of thirds, as well as design and painting, everything, the rule of thirds is understanding that if your subject takes up about three of these one, two, three, four, nine blocks, it'll be a compelling image. It'll look interesting. Um, if you're taking it more than that, maybe it's too much. If it's less, it's not going to be the focus of the image. Um, it's all about how they intersect with those thirds. So it's hard to see for you. How they intersect with the thirds if they're on cross lines or if they're taking up just sort of three blocks in the corner. That can be quite interesting. Generally, the rule is something like um, put your head <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Pop the person's expression about not exactly a direct center, though that can be quite, um, it'll change the mood of the image, but that's totally a photo you can make. Um, but putting your image somewhere like, for example, here, putting it maybe a little bit above the center line. So center line's about here, and I'm more above it than below it. This kind of um, indicates that I'm in a large space. This is more, um, I'm taking up the space on the center. This is more, <laughs> maybe I'm focusing on this more than me. Um, so I've got myself sort of centered. So you know that I'm the one speaking, of course. Those are grid lines. Another trick to do, which I'll, I'll leave it on my current screen just to show you. Again, I've got my case flopping about, is autofocusing. So you'll notice every now and then it'll bring up the little yellow box that'll catch his face. He's a happy, smiley man and he wants to be in the photo and it'll autofocus on his face because it just assumes that you're taking a photo of this person, you want them to be in focus. So it'll try and do that for you. If you think, okay, I don't want him, but I want him in the picture, but I want the screen over here to be focused on, give it a tap and it'll adjust so that that is in focus. You'll notice that it kind of goes zip, 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 zip. Not a great descriptor. <laughs> You'll notice that it attempts to zoom and then it'll catch it and focus. Additionally, you'll notice that the screen will lighten and darken depending on what you're clicking on. So if I highlight the bright light reflection on the screen, sorry, this is more interesting, um, highlight the screen, it'll lighten up everything else because, ah, this is very bright, let me just adjust. Or if you hit the dark screen, it'll darken down other things or brighten them up. It really depends where you press, but it's attempting to balance your image so that the whites aren't too blindingly bright, overexposed, and your darks haven't lost all detail within them. So if you'd like to adjust it yourself, however, if you don't prefer the adjusting it by itself, you want a bit more control, you'll notice that when you press focus, there's this tiny sun, very small sun that comes up next to it. If you hold that sun, so if you see it there, here for example hold it drag it down that'll darken the image so lower the exposure lift it up it'll overexpose the image unless you're in a very uh dark scene and you'd like more exposure that's one way to do it so essentially the lens i don't know if my lens is complex enough i'd have to double check but i have a feeling this generation does not have um what we call it there's digital focus and a manual focus. There's a different name for that. There's a certain type of lens that's used. Um, but I have a feeling this one is a, sorry, digital zoom, optical zoom. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I have a feeling the lens on this isn't quite as clever to have actual moving parts, but it will do a digital zoom, for example. Digital zoom means that it's only zooming in on the image that it's looking at versus optical zoom, which adjusts, adjusts the lens to make it either closer or further away without having to compromise on quality. So if you can imagine a large um, professional photographer's camera has a long lens, when they adjust their lens, it goes, the actual glass in the lens adjusts to make the zoom look different. Yes, it'll capture a different form of zoom, make things appear closer, further away. Whereas um, digital zoom just gets the image it sees and then digitally increases the size. This means that pixels are sort of scrambled up, they're a bit lost. Um, you'll notice pixels more and detail will disappear. So I think this one has digital zoom, meaning that when you do zoom, you're going to start losing quality. It's hard to tell, of course, this person is a photo and is actually made up of pixels. If I look close enough, I can see pixels. So it's hard to tell if this is what's making the pixels or if it's just because he is made up of pixels as a photo. Okay. So oh, the other thing I'd like to show you before I forget um, a neat little trick, not everyone knows. Some people may have stumbled across it accidentally. 
as I had many years ago. If you don't like, for example, holding your iPad, pressing, okay, go, press, press. That, that's kind of hard for me anyway. I prefer to hold onto the side buttons here. Either both the up and the down volume will take a photo. There we go, nice and easy. I find you can hold, um, you can grip it a bit better and it won't shake as much. I find that having to hold it like this is a bit harder and I'm pushing against the screen. Whereas this is sideways, that's a little more controlled. So that's how I prefer to take photos. So try the volume buttons next time you're out snapping some pictures um, and let me know how it goes if it's helpful. <laughs> All right, let's jump back to our PowerPoint and blaze through the last bit. Autofocusing, portrait mode. So they're all different kinds of modes. Um, portrait is a great one. It makes it look as though you've got a blurry background with the face in focus. So give portrait mode a go. It's a lot of fun for taking um, headshots. Um, and then, yeah, autofocusing and exposure. We've had a look at all of them. Excellent. Next. <laughs> Ebooks and audiobooks on your device. The best place to read online books on your iPad or iPhone. It's a brilliant spot. Um, a lot of apps that we have it. Uh, provided by the library can be viewed on a browser um, but of course it's the it's made to be viewed on your device on your iPad or iPhone or Android tablet whatever you have which is going to be Apple devices of course uh, but that's how you view it so I'll have a look at one app that we highly recommend Libby. Libby is a brilliant online resource um, libraries I say we all chip in each library chips in so that we can all afford to get different licenses and copyright things, copyright things, different copies of books available for viewing and listening. So you can access free audiobooks and ebooks using your library card number. And for us, it's your date of birth. Um, if you're signing up with a Marion library, um, you may have a different pin. It could be just your last digits of your phone number or your date of birth or something like that as well. So logging on with that, have a search for public libraries, essay, essay public libraries, I should say. Um, that's how you'll find the collection that we've paid for and it'll let you on that way for free. Um, you can borrow books for 21 days. After that, they will um, just go off your account, auto account automatically. I don't believe they can be extended, which means that wait times can be predicted almost down to the day. Um, depending on whether or not they come in early or not, you'll always have a little calendar on your app and it'll tell you when your book will come in. So it's really handy, a great system. Um, I believe you can have, I think it was 10 books at once, um, but because you kind of blaze through them in 21 days or you, you kind of have to get through them in 21 days, um, you don't often need more than 10 books at once. Um, these include audiobooks. So for those who don't want to keep paying for an Audible subscription, Audible being one of the leading audiobook um, platforms, um, their services can get quite expensive and audiobooks are very expensive. Um, it takes a little time. Um, a lot of editing, um, a lot of recording in order to make them. So they are a fairly costly endeavor, but I think most of us who love audiobooks will agree that they're definitely worth it. Um, and it's brilliant that we can get them for free on Libby. So you can have a hunt down there, um, have a look. I highly recommend it. Excellent. So that's Libby. Love Libby. And everything's free, so it makes it easy. Excellent. Well, on to question time. So I'm going to pause my video very briefly, my recording that is. Um, just so we can wait for some questions if they happen to roll in, let you know. Excellent. Okay. So Rosemary has asked, at the moment, it seems that everything I do on the phone automatically goes to the iPad. Can I be more discretionary? Okay. So what it's doing, it is connecting your Apple ID accounts. Um, I believe you can update these settings. Go into your, let's go into system settings. So preferences or settings, I should say. And it should have a collection of devices that are available to you, or it could even be to do with, let's think, your sharing or cloud sharing. So cloud sharing just means that you have access on other devices that you have logged into to your cloud. So your Apple ID account saves a certain amount of information depending on what you have let it through. Oftentimes it'll ask, do you want to send this to the cloud or back up to the cloud? It'll do it that way. Um, it just means that it's sending your information off to a computer bank somewhere else um, where it is broken down into little bits, literally bits, as in bytes, kilobytes. 
um, and little you know sort of computer information and then on retrieval it'll reform it and put it back in order and make it the large file it is again so sending it off to the cloud will save you space on your device it will also back up things automatically for you so if something goes wrong if you drop your ipad if it breaks if you lose your phone you'll have a backup somewhere that you can log into and have all your information come back so i think it'd probably be in cloud settings that i'm looking at so let me scroll through See if I can find something. Let's have a look. <laughs> Apple Store, Game Center. I get the feeling that because my device isn't logged onto any account, it's just running as if it were a blank device. It'd be in your iCloud. So mine's coming up with, if you can see it just here, it says start using iCloud. So Rosemary, if you can, have a look in settings. Go into your start yours won't say start using iCloud it'll say iCloud or my account or something like that have a look in there and see what it's sharing see what it's been given um, permission to do and from there you should be able to edit things and change things and fix them up to how you'd like so have a look in settings look under your name so it'll have either your um, it will have your Apple ID account email so it should have an email account then just underneath that you'll be able to see more information about your account that's where it should be that's where the information we'll be talking about saving and things like that. I have a feeling that's it. Sorry, Rosemary, I hope that helps. <laughs> Without mine being logged in, it's kind of hard to tell what you're seeing. Um, it'd be lovely to have you in here, of course, but we can't exactly sit down and have these meetings just yet. In future, we will. Excellent. So if that's all we have for today, I will finish up now. Let's finish up with a little... Uh, and the card talking about where we can find more information about us. So staying connected with us through this time, you're welcome to come into the library. Of course, we are open um, in a limited way. So we're open currently. It's Monday to Friday as well as Saturday. So Monday to Saturday, we're open only until five o'clock on weekdays and four o'clock on Saturday. Um, but you're welcome to come in and visit. Uh, follow our Facebook and Instagram for our current up-to-date information. You can also check out our What's On page on our City of Marin website. Uh, subscribe to our Library Loop newsletter. That's where we promote new, pro um, new programs, new events that are coming out. Or give us a call um, at the Hallett Cove Library on 83756755. You can say hi to me. Alrighty. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for your questions. It's been a lovely um, chat. I've had a good time. Got an extra thing in chat. Oh, Rosemary said thank you. Thank you, Rosemary, not a problem. I hope that helps. Um, you can always come in with your device if you have more questions and we can probably work it out together. Excellent, all right. Okay. Have a lovely rest of your day, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.